Big Young Kickoff presents Bear Bets. I'm the Bear, Chris Fleek. I'll be joined shortly by my co-host, Jeff Schwartz, Sammy P, and Will Hill. will join us once again for the Gambling Group Chat in a, in a little while. Been a, been, a, been a rough week, Jeff. It's been a rough week. I know it was late Saturday night, what happened at Hard Rock Stadium in South Florida. As a Miami alum, I am still not over it. You, your connections with... Mario and some of the yes. people at Oregon who are now at Miami, I'm sure you have, you, you kind of took that one hard as well for the, for those guys. I'm thinking I'm maybe I'm putting words in your mouth, but I, I just, I just, I don't want to rehash everything that happened. Um, the, the, the contingent of Miami fans out there. Oh, he was down when he fumbled. Yeah. We'll replay review, <laughs> but no return to play on the field. Play should have never happened. All you need to do is take a knee. Yes. I would think Tyler Van Dyke should even have some game game awareness that says, why are they telling me to run a play? Yep. I just need to need this out, and we win. And the, the script was perfect. You knew they were going to play play a, a ho-hum game with the game in North Carolina coming up this week. You knew that was going to happen. And you almost got – you should have gotten out of it with the win, and then your coaching staff kind of kneecapped you. Like, how, as a player, do you overcome and you get past that? Because this has been a – now, these players may be yes. different, but this is a Miami program who, in recent history, when they have suffered a loss, their seasons have gone in the tank. Last year, they lost to A&M. Following week, they lost as a 20-something point favorite to Middle Tennessee. Uh, 2017, when they had that great year, they, yeah. they lost a um, game, didn't win again. Um, even going back to, to Mark Rick and Al Golden, they'd lose to Florida State and then wouldn't win the rest of the year. COVID year got run up down the field in North Carolina season was over. So it's just been the vibe of this program yeah. lately where they haven't been Miami, what we're used to in the past. So how as a player, do you just put that in the back of your mind and say, okay, it's over. It's done with, we still got goals to play for. How do you do that? I think it's a lot harder for 18 and 22 year olds in college to do that than it is for pro players. Right. Um, but, you know, you look at as a player, and this is why you'll never see me blame officials for wins and losses and kind of blame and blame exterior things. Like, as a player, you can look at the film and say, okay, how could I have done something better that that didn't lead us to lose the game? Now, obviously, look, you kneel the ball, the game's over, and, and everything you did bad or good in the game is, is on film and ready to go. But, you know, you can even point to the final play when Tech st- scored, right? Like, if the safety just plays that correctly... Georgia Tech probably doesn't score and you avoid the embarrassment of, of the fumble, right? Like this, so there's plays as, as players, as, bad, as as upset as you are, you can look at it and say, look, we could have done this and that. So I, I've had this happen where a coaching mistake and led to a loss. I was on the Giants in, in 2015. It was our opening game of the season. We're on the, the road in Dallas. We had the ball about five minutes left, up three. We drove the ball all the way down to the four-yard line at the two-minute warning. We're up three. The Cowboys have two timeouts. It's first and goal at the four. Eli comes in the huddle and says to us, we're not going to score. I want you to not score here. We've been told to not score a touchdown. Now, a touchdown puts us up 10. 10 and the game's over. With two minutes left, and they have two timeouts. The game is over. It's not college football. You don't have weird things happen. The game is done. Um, and so the first play of, the, of that drive, Rashad Jennings has a hole, falls down the two-yard line. He could have scored. The Dallas calls timeout. Next play, we run the ball. Same thing. Falls down. Timeout. Third down, we actually pass the ball, incomplete pass, <laughs> kick a field goal, go up six. So they have no timeouts left, about a minute 45. Which is an eternity. And they yeah, immediately no. drive down the field, and Tony Romo throws a uh, pass to Jason Wynn, and they win the game 27-26. I came in the locker room. I've never been more angry in my entire life after a game, I don't think. I took my helmet and threw it the entire length of the locker room, like furious. We were all angry. Um, you're allowed to be angry in that moment. I'm sure Miami players were angry in that moment. But then you realize when you watch film again that there are plays you can make that don't put you in that situation to lose the game, right? Like there are other plays we can all make to say, okay, instead of a three-point game, maybe it should have been a 10-point game or a 14-point game. So as players, you try to to do that and be in that that mental uh, space to where you look inside and fix what you can fix. I can't fix the coach telling me not to kneel. I can't fix the coach saying don't score a touchdown. So again, it's, it's tougher when you're 18 and 22 than is when you're a professional. But that's the way I look at things as a player. Like, I don't let the referees define if we're going to win or lose a game. There are plays to be made that I can make or my teammates can make that where the game is not put in the referee's hands. Now, I need to ask a, a follow, yeah. the obvious follow-up question. In that huddle, 
Did anybody basically say WTF? Yeah, we we were like we were looked at Eli like uh, like he had four heads. We were I I it was I I don't know who made the call whether it was from the head OC to head coach. I'd never been in a situation like that before. Coaches are like I, they they seem so terrified at times to score quickly. Like I'd rather just score points. And defense is part of playing football, but like just get up ten. And have your defense, they need two touchdowns in two right. minutes with, with no timeouts. Right. Like, even if they get one, they need an onside, onside kick. kick recovery, and which the recovery, odds are. And then move the ball in the field goal range. They kick the field, they'll even tie the game. Like, and, and I just think coaches overthink those moments. You, we saw Jimbo Fisher just completely outthink things and not do things the right way. You, you, coaches make all this money, um, especially in college football. You have 25 billion analysts. Like, I've seen, obviously, I, I follow Oregon uh, program closely. There's a guy on the sidelines you can see who has charts. Like he flips, he's looking through things to tell Coach Lanning, like, this is the, what we can do here. It's what we practice, what we've written out about each situation. And like teams need to employ, like, someone should come to Mario and be like, Mario, kneel the ball. Whoever, whether it's Shannon Dawson, whether it's yeah. the, the, I saw the offensive line coach who walked up there too. Like, you, 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 you make so much money. You and have to yank, have on, every, yank on the headset. Uh, and, uh. Um, and I, look, I get. I saw that you know, the offensive lineman I saw was very emotional after the game. I, I, it's okay to have those emotions in that moment, but I feel like for Miami, and I, I know that pro, the staff well, I should say, like they're going to be fine this weekend in Carolina. We'll talk about that game more shortly. But like, I think they'll be okay. But that's how you have to do it as a player. You have to say to yourself, look, it's what can I fix to help us win, not what the referees can change or what the coaches can change. What, what can I do better? Hopefully they hopefully they listen. Yes. Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> so, they do because they got a lot, still got a lot to play well, for this year. Let's uh let's get into your games you have this week. You have four of them for the listeners, plus a best bet we'll do at the end of the show. Same with me. Uh let's start with your first game, Bear. We're going to the ACC conference. NC State plus three and a half at Duke. The total is 45 or NC State, North Carolina State, that is, is four and two. They've covered only two of their six games. They just beat Marshall 48 41 last weekend. Duke is four and one, having lost their last game to Notre Dame on the final play of the game before their bye weekend. The Devils are, are uh, three and two against the spread, Bear. Where are you leaning here? Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards taking NC State plus the three and a half. I would be very surprised uh, if Riley Leonard, the Duke quarterback, played in the game. He suffered that really Ugly ankle sprain late in that loss against Notre Dame. It's had the least, bad. Yeah, I thought it would be worse than what it was, but uh, you still don't. Lester Hurdy right? was yeah. in a boot. They have Florida State on the road next week. I think they just try and get out of this game with the backup Bellin uh, against the Wolfpack and have Leonard healthier for the game in Tallahassee next week. NC State. I, I was against them last week with Marshall, and that uh, was a kind of a back and forth game, and just got got beat by. Uh, a, a little bit, but I think the move to MJ Morris at quarterback kind of helped their offense oh, yeah. quite a bit. It was the first time I think that they gained over 400 yards against a power five offense this year, uh, w w which is pretty telling. Um, so give me uh, give, give me NC state plus the points here, uh, plus a three and a half in, in Durham. And uh, I'll expect the, uh, the Wolfpack to, to play well. And maybe Duke's offense just clearly not to be yeah. what it can be with, 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 with Leonard, who really is everything for them. Uh, at quarterback, so give me NC State. I think mean, there's some concern if if you're back in Duke here about the emotional effect of losing that close game, and then you have a bye, and then your quarterback gets hurt. Like everything kind of happened all at once. And so I'm with you on NC State. Their offense, as you mentioned, since Armstrong got benched, is just much better. It, it looks much better. They had to do that. All right, let's get to the game I teased: Miami at North Carolina. Miami is plus four. Total is 57 and a half. Miami is four and one. We know how they lost their game. We're not going to do that again. The three and two against the spread. North Carolina is 5-0. and 4-1 oh. and gets a spread. They're led by potential first overall pick. And quarterback Drake May, their defense is improved this season. They couldn't get much worse than last season. They just beat up on Syracuse over the weekend. Where are you going here, buddy? Well, this is going to be one of those because it's college football type results. Yes. And you know Miami will win this game, right? Absolutely. Yes. It's just 100%. the way the sport works. You suffer a devastating loss last week. Nobody everyone's jumped off your bandwagon. Uh, you're going on the road against the North Carolina team, which has been put up a bunch of points in recent weeks. Uh, defense has played much better than it has in recent years. Carolina has owned this series. Last couple of years have been really good field goal type yeah. games, and, and Miami very easily could have won. Uh, either of those games had a late turnover last year, uh, deep in North Carolina territory when they, were, when they were going into either tie at worst or potentially take the lead. 
But I think getting on the road, getting out of South Florida, having a big game circled on the on the schedule yeah. after what happened last week, I, I think this is a really good opportunity for them to kind of look. The only way you erase what happened last week is if you win out. Now. Yes. Because that was a game you should have won. You're a 20 point favorite, and it would have given you like a margin for a loss against Carolina or Clemson or Florida State later in the year. Now you probably got to win all three of those games yeah. to get to the ACC title game. So the only way to do it, step one, is winning Saturday in Chapel Hill. And just because the sport is ridiculous and crazy, <laughs> you know how this one's going down. Uh, I'm with you on this one here. Uh, worth noting that Mario Cristobal, at least at Oregon, they won a lot of big road games. He kind of at home kind of flubbed around a little bit. Oh, by the way, he hasn't Fred. won a, con- a conference home game yet at Miami. Yeah, he, has, he has no. Not, yeah. Like, he just has been better on the road. They, you know, they won at Ohio State, obviously. Yep. He, he, won at, he, he won at USC a couple times as head coach. Like, he just, their teams play better on the road. They're back on the road. Off that embarrassing loss. The over feels late in play for me here with both these offenses being able to score. I'm not sure how good North Carolina's defense is. One other little Drake May nugget. Um, I don't know what the numbers are. Maybe I could find them for Drake May first overall pick. There's going to be a healthy debate this spring about Drake May and Caleb Williams. Um, I know people think I'm crazy when I say this. I've said this before on social media. They're like, oh, how dare you say that? I'm just telling you guys, watch watch Drake May play. There's a lot of, okay, this is sort of in a pro offense. A lot of Caleb Williams play. It's part of the offense. It's not a lot of in rhythm stuff, right? Like I'm just telling you, there's going to be discussion, whether you like it or not, yes, There is about Drake May. And if there's a value right now in taking him to be the first overall pick, might be worth a little sprinkle at some point. Let's get to your, your third game here. Go to the SEC Conference, a team you've, you've wagered on, I think, a couple times, for and against. Auburn at LSU. LSU favored by 11 and a half. Total is 61 here. Auburn is 3-2. and two. They lost their last two conference games before they won on a bye week. They've covered only two of their five games. LSU is 4-2 and two after a road win in Missouri. They're 3-3 three and three against the spread. Lucky to cover last weekend. If you had Missouri, I'm very sorry for you. That was a very tough beat. But they're 6-0 and oh to the over. They have a ton of points, Bear. Oh, Where are you going here? Their defense is terrible, but I'm laying the 11 with LSU yeah. here. Like, like, uh, if LSU didn't have the two losses, like Jaden Daniels' his name would be getting a lot more Heisman yeah. discussion and conversation yeah. right now. But I just don't think like Auburn's defense is going to do what they can to keep them in the game. I, I can't see them getting very many stops in this game. The, the, the perfect elixir for the LSU defense is the Auburn offense. Yeah. It's the team... If you look at the, the, the three power five opponents that they played this year, they're thrown for a combined 238 yards. The passing attack is non-existent. That's what's gotten LSU yeah. uh, this year. Teams throwing the ball against a depleted secondary. I, I, I hate the matchup. It feels like Auburn's a little bit of a, a public type underdog, double digits on the road against because people think, oh, the LSU defense is bad. They were lucky to win last week. In, in, in Baton Rouge, that offense yeah. and, and, and an Auburn offense that I isn't built to, to be chasing points all day. I'm going to lay the 11 with LSU. LSU's defense did get more stops. Than I thought they would against Missouri. Like they, they got enough. Second obviously half to win that did, game. Yeah. They play much better. Second, I think Missouri had 22 points at halftime. I think I ended up with thir- with 39, obviously. And that late touchdown, at the end of the game ended up yeah. costing the, the cover for Missouri backers there. So yeah, Auburn just, I mean, they scored 14 points at Cal and Cal just gave up 52 to Oregon right. state. Like it's, it's their offense cannot move. This is one of my favorite rivalries too. Cause it's, oh, it's always, it's one of those, like something crazy happens and not even like on the field. Barn fire one year at Auburn. You had that earthquake game with Tommy Hotz where they late come back in the ground, shook in the, the, the yeah. seismologist actually size, size, uh, measured that the yeah. ground was shaking. The earthquake people. You had uh, less miles screw up. Yeah, earthquake. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you, you, you and I, the earthquake people. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. You, you had less miles screw up the clock management. Oh, we had a time. Oh, wait, throw it up. Is a, something ridiculous always happens in this game. So I can't wait to see what it is on Saturday. Uh, let's get to your last game here. We're going a little bit off off the map, which I love. We covered you know some Power Five games. Let's get to to your now your Group of Five game here. Troy favored by four and a half at Army. Total is forty three and a half. Troy's four and two. They've won three straight games against uh, teams that are not been very good, but they've won those games pretty handily. They're two and four against the spread. Army is two and three. They're two two and one against the spread here. Where are you going, Bear? Troy's rush defense is allowing 84 yards a game that's fewer than clemson that's fewer than michigan and i just don't think army 
has the offensive diversity yeah. to be able to overcome the lack of a big running game uh, against a team that defends around them. They, they hung in the game against BC, maybe very easily could have won the game, they hung in the game against Syracuse. But, 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 I, but I think Troy here is the play. We've seen their defense play very well uh, in recent weeks. It's a team that since the, since, since the two-point loss to JMU it, it has looked very competent. And uh, I, I think they're the right side here laying the, uh, laying the four and a half. Is JMU going undefeated this year? Are they going to be in a, a playoff team? At, well, they, they, they got, team, a, guess, they got a big be... game this week. They got, they got Georgia Southern this Georgia week. Southern, yeah. We, 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 yeah. That's a very big game. It, I actually thought about taking Georgia Southern. In a 12-team playoff, if they went 12-0, they'd be in, right? I imagine. Yeah, they would probably be the highest ranked group of five team. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. All right. Go from FCS champs a couple of years ago to potentially yeah, I know. college football playoff. That, that's a fast, that's a fast rise. They've been a, they've been a very, very good team for a, a long period of time. And, and the way that program was built, I think made, made the transition to the F, to FBS yeah. pretty easy. Georgia Southern, by the way, is plus six. This is the game opened at three and a half. So it's the really game. other hmm. Yeah, plus six right now. Oh, oh, we are we adding are we adding a, a fifth? You'll have to you'll, <laughs> you'll have to you'll have to check that column on FoxSports.com by the time Friday comes out and see what we've uh what we've added because there will be some ads. Let's uh, let's recap the four wagers that Bear has made so far. You have NC State plus three and a half at Duke, Miami plus the four at North Carolina, Auburn at LSU. You're laying the points with LSU minus eleven, and Troy is favored at Army by four and a half. You are taking Troy here minus four and a half. They've again they've been uh, really all the bad teams they play in Army is not very good. Let's get to the gambling group chat. It's going to be Bear, Sammy. Will Hill and me, we talk all things college, college sports. We cover Oregon, Washington, USC, Notre Dame, Oregon State, and, and UCLA. All the big games, Miami, we, we talk a bunch about Miami again. So stay tuned for that. It's coming up right now. Gambling group chat time is back. I am joined again by Sammy P. Will Hill. And I'm just going to let Jeff kind of kick this segment off right now for the, the biggest game in college football history. I, I say that jokingly, but it's amazing when I looked earlier this week to the last time you had a pair of five and oh pac 12 teams meet and you had to go all the way back to 2004 i think it just got kind of tell us a lot as to why the conference has been as down as it has been that you haven't had this october meeting or later of five and oh teams in, in nearly 20 years but ducks and dogs this week in seattle uh, i i would lean towards taking the uh, the, the points with oregon and i'm sure you would as well, but before we get to Sammy and Will, I want your yeah. uh, your th- your thoughts on this one. Um, so, for those who don't know, we hate each other. Like this is a legit rivalry of hatred between Washington, and Oregon. I think people assume that our rivals are Oregon State and Washington. They are, but there's a legit hatred of the fan bases and the players and whatnot. Like I'm four and zero against Washington. I take a lot of pride and never have slide that Washington. in. Yeah, slide that in. Because um, you know, guys, we know that these are two outstanding offenses, right? But there's one team that has the better defense that's more physical on the offense defense aligns that is able to commit less penalties. Washington, by the way, is 132nd in the country in penalty yards per game. And that team is, is Oregon, right? The team is, is more deep. They're more talented. doesn't mean they win the game, right? But the, the, the team that has the better defense in a game like this typically is the one that comes out ahead. My, my, what I've said for the entire year for the PAC 12 is which defense is the best one is going to win the conference, right? And right now on paper, at least, Oregon's the best defense that has a quarterback that's healthy. You know, Utah doesn't have a quarterback that's healthy. But this game comes down to which team, again, on defense can get three to four stops. That's it. Three to four stops. You're not holding Washington to, to, to you know, to, to 17 points. But can you can you get two punts, a turnover, and, and turn a touchdown to a field goal? That's all this game is. Can Washington do the same? Washington's run defense is not good. They're 95th on third down success. Their havoc rate is, is one of those, is in the 70s for Washington. So Oregon's the better team. Doesn't mean they're going to win, but I side with the team that has the better defense, commits less penalties, and just has more depth and is able to score the ball like Oregon can. So I'm taking Oregon here plus the three. I mean, no surprise, I think, obviously here, but that's my my thoughts on this uh, big game this weekend. I know, I know, I know. Will, Will, or you, I, you, can, you definitely look like you got something to say there. Sammy's um, got a big I, old I, grin on his face, too. I think it's a pretty simple handicap. Can or can Oregon get pressure? If they can get pressure, they can disrupt Washington. If they don't, it's going to be a long day with that, you know, the quarterback and those receivers that those guys are obviously are really good. So uh, the market has kind of told you what they think about this game where it's gotten to three and a half and it quickly goes to three. It's gotten to two and a half and it quickly goes right back up to three. So 
you know, I would take the three. I think this is another situation where live betting might be better, where, hey, you're probably going to get plus three and a half at some point in this game. If you like Oregon, you probably get that hooked, and you could easily see this game landing on a field goal. But uh, give me Oregon. I think they'll be able to disrupt Penix. I think, like Jeff said, I, I do think they're the better team. I think Oregon wins the game. When Jeff says we, I'm trying to figure out who he says. Like, who's we, right? You still play for the team, Jeff, or what? Um, uh, yeah, Sharp yeah, money yeah. came under. 4-0 against Sharp. Washington. <laughs> right. I heard that. I feel like uh, sharp money came under, which is a little surprising here. I mean, bear, we think about these two quarterbacks and we think, you know, big plays, explosions, fireworks, but big money came under 67 and a half and under 67. And I feel like both of these offenses are good enough to sort of set tempo and, and clearly two of the Heisman contenders. And, you know, we look at the Heisman betting board right now and Michael Penix is the odds on favorite whoever wins this game is likely going to be on top of the board. So I'm not going to bet Washington. I've got Penix seven to one, eight to one to win the Heisman. I, I hope that they win, but this is sort of that buy low spot rather than take Oregon bear. I don't think it's a bad bet to just take Bo Nix to win the Heisman. If you think the ducks can win this game and clearly the market says the ducks can win. I'm not going to say we, 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 but this is a good spot for Oregon here. They have a better defense. I, I want to watch like 40 to 37 though. Like, I want a good offensive shootout. Yeah. Hey, I, you, you're, go ahead. You, you mentioned Bo Nix. I will say the thing that I am terrified in this game of is Bo Nix. Like, they're, like, they're, like, I'm not worried about the defense. Again, I think the defense will be able to get enough stops, not shut them out, but enough stops. But road Bo Nix is absolutely yep, terrifying. I don't care if it's an Auburn uniform or an Oregon uniform. He has not played as well on the road as he has at home. If they run the football, and they're able to win first and second downs and keep third down short. That's what has hampered Washington's defense is not being able to get stops early in, you know, in, in a possession and third down is shorter Then I trust Bo Nix more, but in a game where we're getting to third and longs, buddy, I, who oh, that he, he, he terrifies me more than anything else in this football game is what we get from Bo Nix. Yeah, the Heisman market is so baffling to me and frustrated because I, I don't have a, a bet on anyone right now to win the Heisman. Like, it's like you, I thought of it maybe betting yours, and then they lost. Like, I'd love to bet Brock Bowers, but honestly, in my heart, do I think that Brock Bowers is going to win the Heisman Trophy? No, I don't. I don't think the voters will go Caleb Williams two years in a row. Like, I honestly have, I'm genuinely baffled as to where to go right now with this. I, I don't know if Will or, or Sammy have any Heisman thought. I know Sammy actually does with with the Penix ticket, but like. That, that ship is sailed on the price you can get with Penix. So is there anybody out there that might be worth playing? Because it, it, it's so just muddled at the top of the rankings right now. Yeah, I think it's a good point. If you like Oregon this week, maybe you take Knicks. But I think the muddled Heisman pictures, because the national title picture is so uh, wide open, and there's, you know, what, 10, 12 teams that can win it all. Usually it's it's two or three, and that – um, you know, has an effect in terms of the Heisman because the, the national title is, is so wide open. I think we're seeing such a wide open Heisman race. It makes it fun, though. It makes a lot of fun. Is there any chance like J.J. McCarthy could slide in? I know like, like that's the one team that nobody really talks about. I mean, because they're not really like super sexy when you watch them. They win these physical fights in the trenches. They're good on the O-line, good on the D-line. But maybe Michigan at 12-0 and wins the Big Ten. Maybe that's a JJ McCarthy coming out party. Like I, you're right though, bear. There's not a lot of good prices left. I I'm going to repeat what I just said. If, if Oregon's going to win this game, Bo Nix might elevate to the top. So that might not be a bad pop. You could find Bo at like eight, nine to one. I don't think that's a bad bet, but I wonder if like JJ McCarthy might have a little bit of wiggle room given the number because Michigan's not like the high flying offense, but if they run the table and you know, he's got a really good season, he might get some love. I just, I agree. It's a tough market right now. It, it, it's funny because I'm just sitting here listening to you and we'll talk about it. I kind of equated it to uh, the NFL with the MVP in, in, in the NFL where Brock Purdy probably isn't going to have the flashiest stats of all the other quarterbacks or, or even the running backs in the league. But if Brock Purdy is a quarterback of the 14 and three San Francisco 49ers who have home field throughout the playoffs and the best team in the league, like, that's going to garner a ton of votes. So maybe there's a parallel to be made between uh, McCarthy and Purdy. I think with you know, McCarthy, we could do bear. We still have. Uh, no, I was going to say bear bear. And I had max Duggan last year, 150 to one. Maybe we just give it to max Duggan a year late. 
I like I like that idea exactly. He got them to the college football championship game, so I think we can retro retro go back and give it to give Doug in. I, I'd appreciate that, especially after the uh, the week that I've had so far. The, the thing with McCarthy though, right, is that you just have to wait and see Michigan play some of the top echelon teams. They haven't done that yet. So to Sammy's point, he's just kind of sitting in the weeds right now. If you think he if Michigan's going to win against Penn State and Ohio State, then yeah, I mean if they're twelve and zero and and that's one of the reasons why he just hasn't played in those primetime games and. You know, to be fair, this is sort of the first weekend that, you know, that Caleb Williams is playing in one of those games, right? He hasn't done that yet this year. I think that's why, we, you know, may, maybe the hype train has slowed down on him a little bit. He hasn't, he hasn't been the spotlight. J.J. McCarthy hasn't either. There hasn't been a, a big game for Michigan yet. There's, there's, they're coming up on the schedule. And so now would be a good time. Do you think they're going to win those games to, to put some money on him? I, I posted a, a poll question earlier in the week about uh, after last weekend's games, did you think that there were more teams capable of winning the national title or fewer teams capable of winning the national title? Because going into the weekend last week, I, I thought there legitimately could be maybe 10 team, eight to 10 teams maybe that had a real chance to win. And then watching Ohio State struggling offensive line, USC continue to show how their defense is just awful. Um, A&M took itself out. Miami took itself out. Not that those teams really could have won, but they could have made the playoff at least. And Georgia and Michigan played their most complete games of the year. So I'm kind of back to maybe, I'm maybe not back to where I was because I don't think I was ever there, but does it kind of feel maybe now it is Georgia and Michigan versus the field? I, I, don't, I don't know how you feel about that, Sammy. What happened to Miami? I must have I must have missed oh, what happened no. there. I didn't really no, see it. Too yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah, too I, you soon. know what? I'm blaming I'm blaming you for that Edit because that you were there. So so we so we, I'm blaming you. I'm blaming you for that. And I'm I'm trying to move on. But uh that wasn't cool. Yeah, yeah that sucked, yeah, especially that after guy, the, the social team did that nice video of us all <laughs> gambling together. Um it is what it is. That was not a great one. Uh, so I got here's my power ratings: Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, Oregon, Penn State, USC, Texas, Bama, Florida State. That's my order, and I probably cut the prices there. Um, I don't know. I'd love to see Penn State win the Big Ten. Like I feel like you know, Will talked about Penn State a couple weeks ago. I think I talked about Washington at thirty to one. But, you know, the cream always tends to rise. We always have this conversation in early October. Like, is it more wide open? And then we get to November and there's only two teams with one loss or two teams with no losses, rather. So I don't know. I think Penn State is still sort of sleepy in the in the national title market because that defense is really, really good. I just don't know, Will, if Aller can can bring them all the way to get to that 12-0. No, it's a fair question. We'll find out about them soon. But I still think, look, I, I know Georgia was impressive last week. And, and give you guys credit, you guys were all over them. You guys had that game down to a T. But still, if Beck is down 10 points in, in a spot here, do you trust him in like a playoff game? Now, again, we're not going to find out about Georgia probably until the playoff because that schedule is pretty easy. It gets a little tougher coming up. But I still think it's pretty wide open. I, I don't know that we're back to the past, back to, you know, the past couple of years where it's just two or three teams versus everybody else. I still think we've got eight or 10 teams that can at least like get to a title game. Are, are we out on Alabama? Like, are, are we out on them? Or are they still? Are they sort of, no, I, feel, I feel like they're sort of like sitting in the weeds right now. If Milro plays a little bit better each game, kind of just like does a little bit more, like they they look better than they did against Texas. Like they're slowly sort of mm-hmm. figuring things out. It feels like it's a kind of Alabama sitting in the weeds there. I, I don't know if they beat Georgia, but they're not out of this. I don't think. No, not not at all. And that's why one. I kind of yeah, that, that's that's a hell of a price, and that's kind of why. I, I, I approached last week's game the way I did, like the, the magnitude of that game. It was the fulcrum, like you win, everything's in front of yes. you, you lose, and then, oh, they lost it, they're out. Too long. And, but to, to come out of College Station and Kyle Field with the win and get some help from Jimbo Fisher Jimbo. Uh, along the way. like uh, how, how do you make I, – I don't, I, I don't get how you make so much money as a coach and you have like a bazillion analysts. Or all these teams have, have their, their coaching staffs and also an entire analyst staff to not be able to manage games better. Like there's – you need to have someone on your staff who tells you, okay, this is exactly what you're doing. There is a guy on some staffs. I've seen him there. He has like an actual chart. Like he shows the coach like – Here's the chart of what to do in the situation. Why does AM not have that guy? Like, come on, coach. You make so much money. Hire someone to tell you what to do. Why, why, why is someone not screaming in 
Mario or Shannon Dawson's here. We just need to take a knee. That, so why are we running a play? The I, game is over. That, the, win, the win probability is 99.9999999%. I can't explain that one. There's no, there's no explanation. I, Will, Will, I want you to explain something here. I know we talked, kicked this off with the conversation about the Pac-12 and the biggest game in the Pac-12. But there's another Pac-12 game on Friday night. Colorado uh, got their fourth win of the year uh, in a uh, late dramatic fashion in, in, in Tempe. So the four and two Buffaloes take on Stanford. And I, I, I love you for getting involved in this one, my man. Give me Stanford. There's an 11 and a half out there. I, I pretty much just copy and paste my analysis from last week against Arizona state where I said, Hey, Colorado has too many holes on both sides of the ball to be laying four, four and a half on the road against anybody. And, and they, they the, the same thing is true this week. There's just too many holes on that team to be laying 11 and a half against anybody. So they're not good on defense. They're not good against the run issues with the offensive line. It's not pretty, but give me Stanford plus 11 and a half. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I, I Stanford is just, it's just not good. I mean, I, I like Arizona state. You could, you could point to like, okay, they're at home. Kenny Dillingham's calling plays like they're sort of healthier quarterback. But if Ashton Daniels is not playing for Stanford, they don't have a quarterback that can throw the ball. I, I, I guess they can run the ball to death over against Colorado and just make it a muddy game and and, and make it a kind of a, a slobber knocker. But like, if Travis Hunter is back, Colorado's offense is immensely better. Like, and I think he will play on Friday night. I don't know, man. Uh, good luck. I, I, I couldn't do it with Appreciate Stanford it. right now. Maybe an under game too, if they're going to run the ball that much. I, I don't have it in front of me, but those those totals have gotten really oh. high. And last week was a good under game for uh, for Arizona State, Colorado. Yeah. So maybe maybe it's an under game too. Can, can, can Colorado run the ball though? That's the thing. Don't they don't know. try. See, they don't try to run the ball, right? Like that's that's part of it. They just said, look, look we can't do it. We're just not going to try. I actually applaud that. To do do what you do best. Yeah. The 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 other big game in the Pac-12 was really intriguing to me. Uh, UCLA, Oregon State. It's the UCLA just continues to just kind of, yeah, they lost the game in Salt Lake. Now they're like a four four point dog in Corvallis against an offense that they should be able to shut down Oregon State's offense. I think. I mean, I know they put up a fifty burger last week um, against Cal, but the, the the Bruins defense is good. But I guess Jeff, it does again to come down to are we going to get that Dante Moore true freshman moment like we've. Like we got last week right before half. Sorry to yeah. bring that up. Oh, geez. The best bet last week just just soul crushed, just ripped my heart out and stomp on it when when Washington State had that pick six to cover the first half there. Um, there's only been one loss uh, for Oregon State at home in the last three years. It's a really hard place to play. We saw Dante Moore struggle at at Utah in his uh, his first conference road. So I, I think they do struggle. This is, a, this is a fun game for implications beyond this, right? Because the winner of this game has a pretty nice schedule to the end of the season, especially UCLA. If, if UCLA wins this game, they have no Oregon and no Washington on their schedule. There's a chance they're in the Pac-12 championship game if they can win this game on Saturday. Oregon State, if they win this game, they have Washington and Oregon to end the season, but they're going to be heading in that game probably 9-1, and one, hosting Washington two weeks before the end of the season. Like It's a fun game for what could be in the Pac-12 conference when you look at how Utah, Oregon, Washington, USC all play each other. UCLA and Oregon State are kind of sitting there off to the side with good records of good teams and saying, hey, man, maybe we can play for the Pac-12 championship. I think Oregon State wins this game, so it knocks kind of the Bruins out of it. And Oregon State then goes 9-1 and one and has Washington and Oregon to end the season. Sammy, what's on your mind? I haven't heard from you in a little bit here. Well, I was just thinking about how Shadur Sanders went to the student section of a one-win team and threw the watch out. That was, I mean, <laughs> incredible. You know, when you beat Arizona State by a field goal, you got to you gotta flex, right? Uh, let's talk about the sharp money on UCLA, Bear. I mean, this is one of the, the bigger moves of the week. Talk about a line that opened five. It's been slammed to three and a half here. And I think, you know, we learned a lot about Dante Moore when they went to Utah and got sort of suffocated offensively. But I think that game prepares them for this game. And we've seen, like I said, a lot of sharp money on the dog here. They took five. They took four and a half. They took four. Um, and there's some offensive line issues at Oregon State. Sounds like the right tackle is not going to play. Jeff, you know, you need to have the protection, especially when you're DJU and you're super erratic, not very efficient on the field. I think the sharp money on UCLA is is very valid. And I think I wouldn't be surprised if the Bruins win this game outright. I remember watching Big Noon kickoff like two, three weeks ago when Bear was like, don't sleep on UCLA. Well, you got to win this game if you're going to win the Pac-12. And, and, and that was exactly the thing. Like you two guys have, have laid out like, 
you get a split in one of those games and all the teams in the Pacific Northwest are going to start knocking each other off. You don't play either of them. You're going to maybe head into that SC game nine and one or so. And everything was right in front of them. Their defense is the best defense. No one knows is good. And oh, by the way, they lead the nation in opponent yards per play. Their defense is really good. And I think they are going to suffocate Oregon State's offense. I have the under in this game. We'll, we'll get to that later. But um, it's going to be a fun game. It's like, it's like a, again, the Pac-12 is nice to have some, some teams that we want to watch and, and care about for once. And then, of course, it, it's all over after the season. It, it, but it, it's funny how that all these games kind of manifested. I don't know if it was by design or by fluke, where if the Pac-12 did one thing right, it was backloading the schedule. You're going to have all these big showdown games late in the year uh, when, when everybody's watching. So can I interest either of, you, of any of you in Purdue plus the points against Ohio State or Indiana plus the points against, against, against Michigan or UMass plus the points against Penn State, the big Ohio State-Penn State game next week? Either of those big favorites is kind of sleepwalk, look ahead, and just get out of, get out of town with the win ahead of the big one in Columbus next week? Will, you, you're smiling. I'll, I like Indiana. I just think it's harder for Michigan to cover these big numbers with that style. Unless you're really trying to make a point to cover the number um, with the new clock rules, I just think they're four or five yards in a cloud of dust. They don't have these quick one, two play, 75 yard drives. It's more seven, eight play drives. So that's a lot of points for, for Michigan. I like Indiana. I think that's a lot of points. I even think you, you, you didn't mention it, but Georgia Vandy, 31 and a half on the road for George. I still don't love that Georgia <laughs> offense. So I like Vandy. I like, I like uh, Indiana. I uh, on principle UMass. It's too many points, but uh, I've gotten burned too many times by Franklin. He's going to be you know r- running double reverses up thirty eight <laughs> to cover that number. So I can't get involved with Franklin. He was angry at the, me- was angry at the press conference him. this week too. Yeah, he was. Oh, he was. He was. So the the the, the other game, which somehow we failed to mention yet, is where I am headed to after the show. New USC Notre Dame. A little bit of the luster off with Notre Dame predictably predictably losing uh, the week ahead of this game at Louisville last week, but now you've got the the rare instance where you've got the undefeated six and O team, top ten road underdog. It kind of has the feel of a, a of a dog with fleas, don't you think, Sammy? I mean, would would this be just Notre Dame or pass for you? I feel like stylistically, ND is going to just try and run the ball and keep USC off Why the field, you? and that's. That's been the biggest, biggest, excuse me, move in the game. I mean, we saw 62 and a half, and and now we're looking at 59, 59, 59, 60. So I think the sharp money is, is again, speaking volumes here. If you're going to beat USC, you run the ball with SMA. You've got the really good left tackle. Just just sort of run behind that guy and and keep Caleb off the field. I think it's going to be a great game. I will never lay big points with Notre Dame in a big one, though. I mean, they haven't won a big football game since, like, 1997. So I'm, <laughs> it ain't going to happen here. I mean, how do, you, how do you have 10 guys on the field in the last play against Ohio State? So Twice. all of that. Twice. Coming I, I out of a timeout. <laughs> that was such a choke job. It was unbelievable. But but we look at the total here, and I think when you, when you see a market like that with Caleb Williams move almost three points down, three and a half points down, that sort of speaks volumes to where the money's at in this one. So I, I think I think the true price is probably like 57, 56. But because of Caleb Williams, you got to chalk it up a little bit higher because of all the all the money that comes in on those USC overs. I'm so and, and there's gonna be USC. weather, I think, as well. That's it. That that you nailed well, it. Because well, I, I don't think Notre Dame Notre Dame can't keep up with them. Notre Dame doesn't have the receivers. They, they don't have enough juice at that position. Uh, okay, they'll, they'll run the ball, but you they can't outscore USC. The problem is 50s and rainy, and that's perfect Notre Dame weather, so that's keeping me off it a little bit. But I, I still think I, I would take USC with the points here. here. Here's the thing. USC can't keep having clunkers and win football games, right? Like, they played three straight games now that had been less than what they should have played, right? They allowed the most points to Arizona State. The Arizona State has scored all season 28 they allowed the most points to Arizona in regulation. Arizona has scored against a power five team all season. Uh, they allowed 41 to call. Like, they can't keep having these teams. Caleb Williams has the highest average time to throw in all of power five football. 
like only the, the, the only two quarterbacks ahead of him are like William and Mary in New Mexico State in, in all of college football. Like th there's something not right with this team right now. Offensively, they're not in a good rhythm. They're not running the ball enough. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd averages, I think, seven and a half yards per carry. They, he only has 60 carries-ish so far. This Like there's something not right with them. You're back on the road. You're playing a physical Irish team. I'm, I'm with Sam. I'm not putting money on Notre Dame in this spot, but USC has not proven to, to play their best game in a month. Like, is this going to happen on the road now? Get to Notre Dame team that's desperate for a win? I don't think so. It was funny too because it was funny. You were talking about Alabama before, and uh, I saw a post you know, on social on Twitter earlier this week in the comments. And people, how is how did someone rank Alabama ahead of USC? Or and I'm like, well, I'll have you watched USC play the last couple of weeks? And oh, by the way, Alabama has two better wins than anything USC has done. I'm like, I'm like, A&M a and m and Ole Miss are better than anything USC has done. But USC's best wins against Colorado. And who says that? Uh, like Sagarin for one, the power ratings, like a and M's 14th and Ole Miss is 12th. And, and, and like Arizona, I think was, actually it was Arizona was USC's best win. They were like 47th, I think, yeah. uh, in, in Sagarin. So like people, people again, just fail to realize like how some people equate these things. So I, I so I want the, I want the higher number this week. Number of points scored in Iowa, Wisconsin, where the total is 37, <laughs> or Michigan victory margin, where the spread is 34 for Indiana. Higher, higher number. Indiana, Michigan victory margin for the Wolverines, or points in Iowa, Wisconsin. I will take I will the, the Iowa. margin of victory for Michigan. Ooh, we had two we had conflicting voices on top of each not. other at the same time I'll, on other sides. I'll tell I love you, it. Yeah, the Michigan, the, the margin of victory is higher than the points scored in the other game. How about that? Damn, you're the tiebreaker. I guess I'd go Michigan, but if, if I were to go off the board here, Barry, let me give you a, uh, could I interest you in the Texas State over 63, 63 and a half? You can, always interest, me. Final you can always interest me in Texas State. Let me read you some final scores here this year. 42-31, 77-34, 35-24, 50-36, 34-30. You think I'm taking an under in that one? No chance. That is Louisiana Monroe <laughs> and Texas State. This game is going to be maybe in the 80s. This is the over special of the week. I love it. I thought I saw it. it you know, I'm right. It's 34 and a half for Iowa, Wisconsin right now. I think I saw a 34 yesterday. So that number, believe it or not, has come down. So 34 and a half. That's about as low as I can remember for a college football game. I, their offense, I think, is like 15 points behind the target for what they need for and, for the first job. And, and they, they don't have like, the quarterback either. But they also wrong. have like six straight games against top 30 defenses coming up. Like it's an insane stretch they have. And they're not going to fire the coach's kid, right? Like they'll just reassign him or do. Oh something yeah, like, exactly. Take yeah. out the, the quality control Ooh, assistant or something. It's crazy. It's, it's just, it's amazing. Okay, so here's a, here's my other uh, my my other question for the group this week. The bigger, the more likely, because it's college football result of the week. Louisville going to Pitt and losing to the god awful Pitt Panthers, or Miami going on the road and beating North Carolina. Wait, the, the kid that will lose like the first Louisville one lose plus it the pit. points. I mean, that's a higher spread. So, I mean, technically, you're right. If, if you're saying Miami, I do think that's a tricky spot for Louisville off an emotional win. That's just a typical letdown spot. So, I, I think Pitt's a good bet. I don't trust Miami. Look, I wouldn't be shocked if they rallied and won. There's obviously a lot of talent. I don't think UNC's been tested on defense. Um, you know, they, they got really carved up by App State early in the season, but uh, I think that's a tough spot for Louisville. That's a great question, man. Holy cow. I think, and I, I laughed too the day after the Miami game when Mario signed a five-star wide receiver, like they, the way they lost. And then he comes <laughs> out the next day and the five-star receiver is like, yeah, I'm going to go there. You know, it's it's so wild how they keep getting players. I would probably take four with Miami, but man, that's, I mean, it's almost the, the question that I'm asking, do I take four with Miami or do I, and I'll, we'll talk about the NFL tomorrow. Do I take three with the Patriots? Like those are two teams that. Oh, I the love the way your mind is. Oh. I, I mean, you, you either got to take Miami or the New England Patriots. One of those teams is winning outright. Miami. 
Miami, my, Mario has shown a history of this, though, right? Like, you play poorly at home, you come back in, on the road and win a big game. Like, this is what he's done his entire career at Oregon Miami. I, I gladly take Miami plus the four or three and a half or whatever it's going to be at kickoff. It's obviously four now. Um, yeah, no doubt about it. I, Miami's going to win this game. They're going to play much better. They're going to be fine. And uh, they'll overcome that, that blunder that we saw on Saturday. It, it's amazing how the minds of recruits and such – like they they get over that so quickly. I almost like, well, as a fans and alums, I'm still five days later just seething <laughs> over the loss. But yeah, the next day, oh, okay, yeah, that was crazy. I'm gonna go there. It, it truly is unbelievable how some how people the, how the kids can just kind of get that out of their uh, out of their mind and commit. And thank goodness they did because we need a uh, we need some playmakers. Sam, but not you to get all the us to take. One last thing, but not as bad as the timeout. Letting the receiver get behind the entire secondary, that's a concern when you're playing Drake May, when you're playing, you know, the receivers are finally there for UNC. I just don't know if those corners can hold up for uh, for Miami here. That that was the thing. Like uh, We could break that final minute down, oh, 40 seconds. But we don't have like, to. Haynes King, Haynes King is not is going to run the ball there. I mean, you need... Uh, uh, just tackle what, what the else? receivers. Will anything... Will, 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 anything else on this week? I don't want to go back to last week anymore. I'm done. Look how pain I'm so he is. tired of it. So pain. Yeah, you got anything? Any? Any? Uh, you got another Indiana or a Vandy type play for me or no? No. I, oh, oh, oh. What would a Bear Bets podcast be without the State University of New Jersey? Should they really be laying four and a half, five points to anybody? Hell uh, no. Michigan State has not been terrible here. Is that too many points? I kind of like Michigan State in that spot. If Michigan State doesn't win this week, how I, I wanted that, that under two and a half win total adjusted, I would have loved to have seen what the price would have. If they don't win this week, they're not winning. So this this is the last chance for uh, for Sparty, I think, to get a win. Sammy, what else you got? You got anything else for us? I know you gave us the uh, Texas State total there. You got any other uh, buttes like that? Yeah, buddy. Our guy in the desert is looking at 308 911. How about that for a rotation number? That's Princeton and Brown. <laughs> now, look, we've got some potential, got some potential weather in the area, but it looks like it's going to be okay in Providence. They're probably going to hang a 44 or 45 in this game. Brown is the new energizer bunny, guys. They have a quarterback, they throw the ball all over the field. We're going to take the over. It's not going to come out till Saturday, but once it pops like 44, 45, our guys are going to go over that one and they're going to take the over in Princeton and Brown. And I promise you, you can only hear that on bare bets. <laughs> see, 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 Sammy is great because great. Sammy is like the Rhode Island expert of college athletics. I love it. A couple of years ago, he was all over the Brian overs before the, the board could get adjusted. And now we're getting a Brown Princeton Ivy League football total. What, 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 what a way to same. end the gambling group the chat. Can, you da you da you're damn right. Can you just it does. do in one more since we've talked about this guy a lot. Uh, Cam Rising is not going to play this weekend. Why would you take anything but the under in Salt Lake City? Like, and it's like, high. It's, like, it's Well, it's 45. That's, I mean, it's not, that's I mean, higher than I thought it would be for or, those teams. Utah's gone under in all their games this season. Like, I, I, the under, you just have to hammer it and just move, live with it if they go over in this game. But no Cam Rising again. I mean, I don't know how you take anything other than, again, Utah's points per drive. Is less than Iowa. It's less than Iowa. Like take the under in this. Anything game, less. Anything so. offensively, and you say less than Iowa. That's <laughs> that's probably a more fitting way to end yes. the, the, the gambling group chat. Less than Iowa. This group certainly is more than Iowa. Sammy P. Will Jeff and myself. Talk to you guys next week. Another lively gambling group chat. No, no group wagers this time. That that burned us bare last weekend no. on the Miami uh, no, the Miami man, to make yeah, the playoffs that, wager. That, 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 that drained the account a little bit, as did the uh, the in game live wager that I put out Miami money line after they took the twenty seven three lead. That was it has, it has not been a good week. I just want to make sure everyone knows I'm picking Oregon to beat Washington. Just so we're, oh, just you, so we're, are, yeah, you are? Just so we're, just so we're aware sure of that. It's got a little per no, like, no, no, it's, no it's, purple it's, it's on my shirt. Pink. No it's purple pink, on the, the shirt. Way, the no. way the, the pink and the blue kind of come together make, gives it a little, a it, little there's purple, no purple There's no purple hue to this. None, none, none. Oregon's winning that game. Just just get over it, Washington fans. All right, let's recap your wages before we get into our, our best bets. If you forgot what Bear has done earlier, I'll let you know. NC State plus three and a half. At Duke, you have Miami plus four, North Carolina. Auburn at LSU. LSU favored by 11. You took the Tigers here. I guess they're both Tigers. You took the LSU Tigers. Yes. And, purple, uh, the team in purple. The team in purple. Ugh, gross. 
but who likes purple? Oh, gross color. Uh, Troy minus four and a half at Army. What is your best bet for college football this weekend? I like Air Force laying 10 and a half in Colorado Springs against Wyoming. Um, I, I think this is an Air Force team that maybe they had, they had looked a little bit, I guess they got one of the CIC games next week. Uh, they, got, they, go to, they go to Annapolis and they play Navy. But this Air Force team drilled San Diego State a couple of weeks ago. And if you, you look at Wyoming, they've given up a lot of yards on the ground. Yeah. Like, usually Craig Ball teams don't give up a ton of ground, a ton of yards on the ground, but they gave up, I think, over seven yards a carry against New Mexico. Uh, there was someone else they gave up a uh, app, app State. They gave up over 200 yards on the ground. I, I, I don't know. It, it feels like you had a team that's won a couple of games already as an underdog outright so how sustain either tells you one yeah. or two things either the market is completely under underestimating wyoming or the market has it right and they've just kind of exceeded expectations and won a couple of games that they probably shouldn't and that ultimately is going to kind of come back to the mean so uh, i'm going to lay the uh the ten and a half here with air because i think his offense is really really good good spot to fade wyoming off a win against fresno state um in the win against fresno state and the upset Against Texas Tech, they scored, I believe, zero second half touchdowns in those four quarters. <laughs> they obviously scored, I think, a touchdown against Texas Tech in overtime. Right. But the second half of these games, they have not scored. So uh, Air Force, sneaky good defense, by the way. Yep. They, last season, this season as well. Um, so I like that wager there. All right, I'm going to the Pac-12 Conference as usual. If I lose another game on my best <laughs> bet, the way I lost UCLA first half last weekend, I'm I might not give any wages anymore I, I don't know how you, I, I don't I UCLA was up six driving in for a touchdown field goal anything just fall on the, on the ball and they and they cover the first half said they threw a pick six a pick six bear all right I'm going back to UCLA actually Oregon State uh, is hosting UCLA I'm taking the under here at 54 and a half you have two teams that want to run the football you have two teams that want to protect their quarterbacks in their offense you have Dante Moore for UCLA if you watch that game they, they don't, just don't really trust him on offense like they they they, they it, yeah, it, like they don't they don't trust him on offense, so I, I don't expect him to do well in a raucous crowd again. Corval is hard to a place hard to win at. Both teams protect Carson Steele. Bruin Rainer had thirty carries last weekend. Like they're trying to run the football. So is Oregon State. Uh, UCLA's defense number two, I believe, in points per drive. Their their havoc rate is is eleventh. Like they they hit the quarterback. They have tackles for loss. I just see a slow. Grind it out game. Give me the under here in Corvallis. Only, only thing that I would worry about in this game is what we just you mentioned. Don't really trust Dante Moore. Has had a couple of pick sixes already. Yeah, too, yeah. And DJU is certainly capable of giving it to the other team as well. I, I if you, but if you don't get <laughs> yeah. a non-offensive touchdown here, I really like that. Yes, that, that, that does scare me because Dante Moore, again, two straight games, pick sixes. Um, yeah, that would if that happens again, Bear. You just cursed me. You know, you just cursed me again, didn't you? I did. Just, you just cursed my my best I, I, bet. I, I did. <sighs> At least I didn't wear purple. It, it, I yeah. actually thought about that when I woke up this morning. I said, "Do I want? Do I want? Do I want? Do I want to be that guy and wear purple to upset my co-host?" Or not? I said, "No, I'm going to be." You should have said that to troll me. No, you, okay. you're nice. You 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 bring me breakfast here. I do. Every, yes, a nice New York bagel. When, when Hopefully I that, that karma leads to a win this weekend. It does. Being this, being someone that's got some Oregon conference title bets, I, I hope. <laughs> yes, you, I, I, I'll be, I'll be rooting for you. You do, sure. Yeah. Anything else? No, we're good. Another weekend of college football. I like it. Hopefully, hope and, and the games are getting bigger. And uh, Pac-12, what we talked about earlier, whether they did it's it nice. by design or whatever, they got all these big games coming up. So, hopefully, next week we can ha come in here and we got to figure out what we can do. If we have a Miami win and an Oregon win, how do we celebrate next week? Uh, it has to be food related, I would imagine. Would you? What would give you that? Yeah. <laughs> so let's hope. Let's hope let's for hope a Miami still. win. Let's hope for an Oregon win. That's another edition of Bear Bets presented by Big Noon Kickoff in the books. For Jeff, for Sammy P, and for Will, I'm the Bear. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>